Hi, my name is Andrea Henson, and I'm the Assistant Director for, C for Recruitment for CTY. Thank you for joining me today for this webinar on on-campus program, East Coast Sites. In today's webinar, we'll provide you with an overview of CTY. We'll discuss on-campus programs, the East Coast Sites specifically. We will be joined by Galen White, who is the Assistant Director of On-Campus Program, who will give us more in-depth knowledge of the sites as well as the um, on-campus experience. And then we'll talk about how you join CTY and the testing and eligibility requirements. So let's begin. Since Johns Hopkins Center for Talented Youth was founded in 1979, we've worked with tens of thousands of bright kids from all over the world. While no two gifted children are the same, we know that they share some common characteristics. We know that they need challenging and exciting coursework. They need a curriculum that allows for acceleration and enrichment that's taught by supportive instructors who are skilled at working with advanced learners, but are also really experienced in helping to maintain students' engagement. We wanna make sure the students have social connections with other bright kids who love to learn and they need to be with kids who share similar interests and similar passions. They need to have a place to have fun and be themselves and a sense of belonging. And this is what we do at CTY. We help bright kids thrive by giving them the tools, learning experiences, social connections, and confidence to be themselves, to set high goals and to work towards accomplishing them. So what is CTY? We're a nonprofit academic center based at Johns Hopkins University, which is America's first research university. And we're continually advancing the field of gifted education through peer review, published research into how advanced students learn and what they need to thrive. As a part of the Johns Hopkins University, we have access to a community of world-class experts in fields like engineering, medicine, bioethics, public health, and arts and sciences. And we draw on that expertise when staffing our programs, obtaining grant funding, and taking data-driven approaches to talent identification and curriculum development. CTY is truly global, serving thousands of students from around the world each year. And we currently have served over 150,000 alumni. <clears throat> Now let's take a deeper dive into our on-campus programs. Our on-campus programs is for students who are in grades two through 12. Students take one course over a three week session, which allows them to take a deep dive into the content of that particular course. The students have the option of doing a residential program or a day program. Our residential program are for students who are in grades five and above, and at our residential site, students stay on a college campus and they stay there for the entire three weeks, which includes overnight and weekend. And our day commuter sites, students are actually picked up and dropped off daily. Most of our day sites are for students who are in grades two through six. Our sites are held at, across the United States and students who are interested in taking most of the courses must either submit a test or submit qualifying scores for most of the courses. Um, our application is currently open and you can visit our website to apply. The deadline for our applications is May 3rd, um, 2024. So what are some of the benefits for attending an on-campus summer program? Well, one is that we have small class sizes. Our class sizes are no more than 12 to 15 students per class. And keep in mind that each class has an instructor and an assistant, which helps to reduce the student to teacher ratio. That we already have advanced curriculum with the rigor that's already built in to meet the challenges of an advanced student. We also incorporate in a curriculum novel approaches on um, learning strategies, including hands-on learning and other ways to ensure students' engagement is maintained. There's a list of great courses that are available for students to take that's not always offered in school. And these courses are taught by instructors who have expertise in the content area and skills in working with advanced students. The instructors do provide detailed feedback on the coursework 
ensuring students have masteries of skills and concepts and provide an end of course evaluation for the parents. And then most importantly, again, there's that social connection where students are with students who have the love of learning and where they have a sense of belonging and um, enjoy their time with other students from around the world. So new for the summer of 2024 is that we have two new day sites. And again, these day sites are for grades two through six, and this is in Quest Academy in Illinois. And our second new day site is at Merman School in Los Angeles, California. We also have some sites that we have used in the past that we are returning to this year, and that's Dickinson College in Carlisle, Pennsylvania, and Skidmore College in Saratoga Springs, New York. And again, these are residential sites. We have lots of addition to the course catalog this year, including a new discovery samplers course. This is a multidisciplinary course where students explore three different topics in one three-week session. So in instead of the deep dive that you did in the traditional course where students would take one course over three weeks, the students in this course will have three different topics or mini courses, meaning each one would last a week, and then they would take that as their three-week session. And these courses are open to all students and test scores are not required to enroll in Discovery Samplers courses. For more information on those courses, please visit our website. It lists the actual three topics that are covered in each course per grade level. And then we also have our risk-free refund policy, which means that you can feel confident enrolling now with the understanding that if something happens and you need to cancel, that as long as you cancel before March 1st, that you will be able to receive a full tuition refund minus the application fee. So as I mentioned, we offer day and residential in-person summer options. And we have a total of 11 day and residential sites this summer. Here are our four day program sites for 2024. And as you see, three of them are on the East Coast. So let's take a look. First, we have the Gilman School, which is in Baltimore, Maryland for grades two through six. Gilman is a suburban 57-acre um, campus in northern Baltimore City. We're about an hour drive from Washington, D.C. The session capacity at Gilman is for 180 students per session. As you can see, session one is June 23rd through July 12th, and session two is July 14th through August 2nd. Again, we also have Quest Academy, which is new site for us in CTY for 2024. So we're very excited to be there. This is a suburban five-acre campus in the city of Palatine, um, which is about an hour outside of Chicago, Illinois. Um, the site capacity per session for this site is 110 students. And because it is new, we only have one session at our Quest Academy, which will be June 23rd through July 12th. And then our last day site on the East Coast is at the Spire School in New York, New York. This is again for grades two through six, and this location is in Upper West Side of New York in Manhattan's Columbus Circle. And the facility that's being used is a K through eighth grade independent school. So the site capacity per session for um, this location is 230 students, and again, please make note our session dates for Spire is a slightly different. We start a little later at this site than the others, and we begin our session one on June 30th and through July 19th, and session two begins July 21st through August 9th. And here are our several, our seven residential program sites and dates for summer of 2024. And as you see, we have five of these sites on the East Coast. And so we're gonna kind of just take a little dive into each one of those sites. First is our John site at Johns Hopkins University um, in Baltimore, Maryland. And this site is for grades seven through 12. Um, Johns Hopkins University is located in Baltimore City. It's a 140 acre campus. It's a beautiful campus, a beautiful location. And it's about an hour drive outside of DC. So our site capacity per session is about 300 students. And our session dates are our session one is from June 23rd through July 12th. 
And session two is from July 14th through August the 2nd. We'll also be at Dickinson College in Carlisle, Pennsylvania. Again, this is a, call, a, a site we're returning to for 2024. Dickinson is a nationally recognized private liberal arts college. It's located um, in a small town outside of the capital of Pennsylvania, which is Harrisburg, and it's about a 144 acre campus. Um, so beautiful location as well. Um, this campus has a site capacity of about 440 students per session. And so session one is June 23rd through July 12th, and session two is July 14th through August the 2nd. We'll also be at Roger Williams University in Bristol, Rhode Island. And this is for grades five through 10. Um, and this university is located in the coastal area. It's a coastal town. Um, it's very beautiful and you know, wonderful opportunity for students as they're near the beach. Uh, the site capacity per session um, at this location is 340 students. And again, our session dates are session one, June 23rd through July 12th and session two, July 14th through August the 2nd. And then we're at Ursinus College in Collegeville, Pennsylvania. And this is a 170 acre suburban campus and it's about an hour outside of Philadelphia. It's a private liberal arts school. And at this site, we have a session capacity of about 200 students and our session dates are similar to all the others. Session one being June 23rd through July 12th and session two, July 14th through August 2nd. And then we're also finally in this the last one being from the East Coast at Skidmore College. And this is again, a, new to 2024 that we're returning. And Skidmore is a thousand acre campus in a small city in upstate New York. Um, Saratoga Springs actually is called um, America's best college town by Princeton Review. So it's really, really a great um, community. Um, our site capacity per session is about 240 students at this location. And please take note again, that our session dates um, for Skidmore College are slightly later than all the others. We won't start at Skidmore until June 30th through July 19th for session one and July 21st through August 9th for session two. So at this moment, we're gonna take a brief pause and be joined by Galen, who is the Assistant Director of On-Campus Program, who's gonna go a little more in depth on our sites on the East Coast and just the overall in-person experience. Hi, my name is Galen White. I am the Assistant Director for On-Campus Programs um, at CTY. Um, I have been with CTY full-time for coming up on 27 years. I was a summer employee for seven summers before that a long, long time ago. Uh, my role at CTY is much more of a behind-the-scenes role in terms of the families and students are concerned. I work with and support our program managers, our assistant program managers, who are the full-time staff who go out to the sites um, and, and communicate with the sites during the course of the program, um, making sure that they're in touch with the administrators who are there day to day. Um, I also work with our enrollment department on communications, making sure that families have the information that they need. Um, so it's a lot of behind the scenes things, um, though I am during the course of the summer, I am on call um, 24 hours a day, like all of our full time staff um, in our department, making sure that in case of an emergency or anything unexpected should occur, we are available to support the sites, the staff and the students. Um, once a student is enrolled um, in a course at CTY, um, they gain access to what we call the site information. Um, the site information is available within the MyCTY environment under the on-campus summer programs link. Um, below the course assignment information, there is a link to site information that is specific to the location where that student will be attending this summer. So for example, if you are enrolled in a course at the Bristol, Rhode Island site at Roger Williams University, the Bristol site information will automatically appear within MyCTY. Contained in the site information um, is, is a bunch of information that is universal to the program and also some that is very site specific. So there will be information on completing the medical form, um, on completing the immunizations policy or the completing the immunization information, on how to request transportation if a student is flying or taking a train um, to the site, 
There's information on how to request pickup by CTY staff um, uh, when they arrive um, and how that, how that whole transportation process works. There are schedules um, for both arrival and departure day and also typical daily schedules. Um, the, the mailing address, some people still do send stale mail. So that information will be available, um, how, to, how to send a letter to the site. Also the office phone number. Um, and and um, reminders about our, our uh, code of conduct, um, a packing list, which is very important, things that we suggest students bring, also a list of things that students should not bring to the program. Um, some of that, as I said, is, is universal to all of the sites. Some of it is very site specific. The schedule, where to go, um, can, can vary a little bit for each site. Obviously the transportation arrangements will be a little bit different for every site. Um, on arrival day, um, most of that day is um, checking in with our administrators, um, making sure that going through the lines, there are lines, we apologize for that, um, to make sure that the medical form is complete to drop off any medication that students will be bringing, all of that that has to be kept in the, in the health office, um, unless it's an emergency use medication like a rescue inhaler, obviously a student can, can keep something like that with themselves. The vast majority of medication will be dropped off, um, students will get their lanyards, uh, which are sort of the most popular keepsake um, to keep their keys on. Um, if the site uses meal cards, not all do, there will be meal card pickup um, and a chance to ask any questions of administrators who will be mingling and available throughout the day um, at, at the check-in location. Uh, students will get their, their room assignments. Their, they'll Maybe if their roommate is checking in at the same time, they'll meet their roommate right away. The families can, can, can meet each other. Um, we don't really you know how students are getting there and what time is something that they will determine. But generally, the check-in um, area is open from about um, 10 o'clock in the morning till three in the afternoon. Um, and we and it sort of tends to be a, a steady process throughout the day. Um, round about three o'clock, um, we will obviously keep a register a check-in area open. Um, for students um, and families who are not able to arrive by three o'clock. Um, most of the administrators will go over to um, what we call a, a, a parent meeting, um, an all-site orientation. It can have lots of different names, um, but generally there's a session for meeting for parents um, to meet um, the administrators who will introduce themselves. They will explain their roles at CTY. They will offer words of encouragement. Um, words of advice on how to um, schedule, you know, the, the, the best ways to contact children uh, or students, excuse me, during the course of the session. Um, because the students are so busy, oftentimes parents will call um, and students will not be able to take the call because they're in class or activities. Um, and parents will sometimes get worried that their, their child is not responding. And usually that just means they're having fun. Um, and so, but we'll, we'll offer that type of um, advice, information to parents. Um, and again, the administrators will stay after that meeting um, to, to answer any student specific questions that parents have. But generally they will meet the site director, the academic dean, the dean of residential life, the counselor, um, and possibly the assistant site director as well. All of, all of the people who are in charge of the, of the site day to day, um, and they will explain the different areas that they are responsible for. The academic dean will talk about how classrooms or how the classes work, the schedule, what students can anticipate doing in the classes. Dean of Residential Life will um, provide more color and information on the residential program, the activities program, what a, a weekend looks like at CTY. Um, and, and so it's, it's a, a fairly straightforward meeting. It does not last very long. Um, families will, for families that cannot attend that session, um, and typically that's families that are driving from a, a, a fairly decent distance. It's fine. You're, there's nothing critical um, that you won't get from the information sheet when you first check in that will have all of the important phone numbers and email addresses for who to contact if you have any concerns or questions during the course of the session. We, we give that information to parents in lots of different ways to make sure that they all have it and know who to talk to about which type of a concern during the course of the session. Hopefully there are no concerns, um, but we know that people often have questions or they hear something from their child, they just wanna get a little bit more information. And so we provide the information on how to contact parents. 
uh, during the closing ceremonies, which happen on the last day of the session, typically um, there will be some remarks from the site director. There will be a slideshow of some sort, um, no longer the actual slides that I used to put together when I, when I was working as a summer employee, um, but a, a PowerPoint or a movie of some sort, um, sort of encapsulating, summarizing the experiences that student had during the course of the session. Um, there might be some student presentations, either something they, um, some students did during the talent show. Um, oftentimes students will read something that they wrote in a writing class or for a different class to sort of give a, a a flavor for the parents of what the students were doing both inside and outside of the classroom during the course of the session. Um, and then we send, let's say, our, our, our fondest farewells um, and, and families then depart um, or, or, or they head over to our parent teacher conferences. So um, there are conferences available for parents to meet with the instructors and the teaching assistant, um, usually in about 10 minute slots. Um, to speak with the instructor about um, how their child performed in class. And we really want those to focus not on um, necessarily they achieved a certain grade. We do not give grades at CTY, but it's really time to talk about um, where students excelled, where they grew, where they showed a lot of improvement. Um, the instructor might have some suggestions for things that students could work on to enhance their learning. Um, in the future, they might have recommendations for um, you know, readings or other CTY classes students might be interested in. So sign up information for those conferences will be available um, at some point during the session. We're, we're, we're trying to standardize that and make sure that that every family has an opportunity um, to speak with the instructor after the session. Um, ideally, it, it's on that pickup day when all of the instructors are in one place and we, we, we know we have them for those for those couple of hours after after the closing ceremonies. Again, the closing ceremonies are not required. They're not mandatory. We often recommend, um, particularly for students who um, are attending East Coast sites and they need to fly home. Um, the most important thing is for them to get on that plane. Oftentimes during the summer, there are afternoon thunderstorms um, that either delay or cause cancellations that are, are not always fun for the students to navigate. Um, so again, the, the closing ceremony is not a requirement, um, and we, we really recommend that at that point students really, you know, they expect to be going home and making sure they get home is the most important thing. Um, on the East Coast sites, um, and I'm including Chicago in this because it is east of the Mississippi, um, we have three day sites, which are for students in grades two through six. Those students attend, there are obviously, we call them day sites, sometimes we call them commuter sites, but they attend during the day. These are not residential programs. Most of the students at those locations um, live, live in the general area within community distance. We do have increasingly families who come from elsewhere in the United States um, or from abroad who have a family member or some other, um, they've made some other arrangements to live in the area during the course of the three weeks and they can get their students to and from the site. So those locations are in uh, New York City at the Spire School, which is near Columbus Circle on the Upper West Side, at Gilman School um, here in Baltimore. It's in Baltimore City, but it's um, not downtown. It's in a much more suburban feeling residential area. And then our new site at Quest Academy, um, just outside of Chicago in Palatine, Illinois. Day sites operate pretty much the same. Um, you know, students come during the day, there is an activity period in the afternoon, um, a sort of a summarizing class, um, and then they go home in the evening. Um, generally, there's homework assigned for the younger students, the students who are, you know, second and third graders, it could just be 15 or 20 minutes of, of work. For a fifth or sixth grader, it might be up to an hour of work just to make sure that the learning is continuing and to reinforce some of what they did in class that day. Um, carpool is available, or obviously a lot of families were carpool. Um, once you're enrolled, you have access to what we call the Family Connect Board that is also in my CTY under the on-campus summer, on summer, on campus summer programs um, link where you can opt in um, to have your, your name and contact information shared with other families so you can make your carpool arrangements and find out who lives live, lives near you. Um, that, that's sort of a way that we have of facilitating communication among families 
um, without actually managing the communication ourselves. Um, the one different, and so parents typically bring their kids um, or there you know, someone else who's been authorized to bring their child to and from the site. Um, at our site at Spire in New York, since um, a, a number of families are accustomed to having their students take subways or public transportation around New York, um, we, we do allow for students to sign themselves out at the end of the day. They do need to come into the office, let us know that they're leaving once we have an authorization from the parent to allow the student to do that. That is an option um, at the New York site, specifically at, um, at the Spire School. At Gilman and um, I imagine at Quest, although that is new um, and I have not been there, so I don't I don't really have the lay of the land yet. Um, the, some, some responsible adult who the parent authorizes will need to drop the student off and pick them up every day. Again, that can be authorized um, through carpool. That can be the parent saying, I'm the only one um, who is picking my child up and dropping them off. It, um, that, that is up to parents to do. There's an authorization form available also in my CTI along with in the same place as the site information. Um, and uh, the other thing I can't remember um, that I was mentioning earlier, oh, the, the Family Connect Board. Um, at our residential sites on the East Coast, um, we are at Roger Williams University in Bristol, Rhode Island. Uh, Skidmore College in Saratoga Springs, New York, or Sinus College in Collegeville, Pennsylvania, which is right outside Philadelphia, uh, Dickinson College in South Central Pennsylvania, and Johns Hopkins University here in Baltimore. Um, we have a, a fairly standard approach to how we run our sites. We know there's a general structure in place at all of our locations. Um, some of the things that are universally true is that we, we don't do weekend trips, unfortunately, or really any field trips except for our one marine ecology class, because that is a field science course. Um, we've just determined over the years that the riskiest thing we can do with students is put them in vehicles and transport them somewhere um, and sort of let, let them loose um, in a, an uncontrolled environment. Um, families have different levels of comfort with the amount of freedom they, they give their students and how much non-supervision non they want them to have. And we really do need to make sure that we are being as safe as possible and that all families are comfortable with the environment the students are in. So during the week, um, there are typically two afternoon activity periods that students can sign up for. The resident assistants who live in the dorms with the students will determine what the activities are going to be each day and students sign up in advance. Um, because some activities are, will have um, space limitations, um, depending on the room they'll be using or the nature of the activity, students will often be asked to rank their activities and we try our best to make sure that they get their first or second choice in attending the activities. There are a variety of things they could choose from. There are always going to be a mix of active and less active activities. Um, Ultimate Frisbee has sort of been an unofficial CTY sport since I was an RA in the program, at least. So that's more than 30 years. Um, and, and also quirkier activities where the RAs were, the, the activity is going to have a name and the students don't really know what it is, but it sounds like it's going to be interesting and they just sort of want to see what that's going to be. Um, there was an activity many years ago called Hiding in Plain Sight. Um, I don't quite understand it, but it was very popular and the students had fun. Um, there are also things like arts and crafts activities. They could make friendship bracelets um, for the Swifties who are coming to the program, um, but they're gonna be age appropriate. They're gonna be a variety of activities um, and the students really do have the ability to, to, to choose which ones they want to go to. Some students will wanna play ultimate Frisbee every day, either because that's their, their way to get exercise for the summer or they just like it. Um, others will want to try something different every day, and that's really up to them. Um, the more different things they try, um, the more different people they're likely to meet and interact with during the course of the program. Weekends are a little bit different. Um, most sites will have a talent show, um, dances or social activities, um, and uh, um, game shows, talent show, I think I said talent shows, um, field days, it really depends on what the RAs um, are determining um, in, in terms of what the of what they want to put on for the students, but they don't have class. 
um, Friday evening, all day Saturday, and um, Sunday um, until after dinner. So that's a less structured time where the students can also maybe sleep in a little bit, get a little downtime, um, do laundry. They will do their own laundry. Um, the RAs are there to help them. The students can do their laundry together. Um, they can do it separately. The, the laundry facilities are going to vary um, at, at the different sites. So it's sort of hard to predict what the arrangements will be at each location. Um, but then they will have longer all day events or, or multi hour events to, to, to keep them busy and occupied. They do need to attend those events, but there's always some sort of an alternative. So if there is a, a dance or an evening social, um, there is going to be a couple of other options for the students who just don't want to feel like they don't feel like they want to dance or they just they don't like the any sort of perceived social pressure. So there's probably going to be a movie being shown. There's probably going to be a game room where the students can go. And if they want to go back and forth between the two, that is that is fine as well. There are RAs in both locations who can escort the students uh, back and forth to make sure that they're, you know, they're not having um, anything but the best time during the course of the evening. There are some differences in sites. Um, mainly in terms of their, their physical locations and what that means. Um, so at our site at Roger Williams in Bristol, um, the university is located um, in a coastal area. Uh, so they go outside and the, the beach is, is not far away. We are not going to take the students swimming in the ocean or anything like that, but it does create you know, a, a nice and different um, atmosphere for the students. It, it's unique to our East Coast sites. Um, Skidmore College, in Saratoga Springs is in upstate New York, a couple hours north of New York City. Um, it's a, a, a cultural area. Um, again, with with um, you know there, there aren't field trips, but um, there is often an opportunity for students if they wish to sign up to to walk into town on a Saturday morning or a Sunday morning. They would walk in groups. They will be supervised, um, but it is a chance to safely get them off campus. It's a small enough town. Um, that there, there shouldn't be any risks involved um, in them doing so, and the staff will go into town with them. Um, and they'll probably arrange to have periodic check-ins to make sure that everyone is accounted for, but they can you know, go into shops, they can get ice cream if that's available, um, just to have a, a, a break from the campus. Uh, Dickinson College in Carlisle, Pennsylvania, that's in South Central Pennsylvania. Um, it, Dickens or Carlisle is a very small town. It's where I worked when I was a summer employee, so it's near and dear to my heart. Um, to be honest, there's not a lot going on in the town during the during the summer. There's not a lot of things to walk to, um, and so that just that means means the RAs need to make sure that the, what's going on on campus is engaging. It's fun. There's a variety um, for the students. Um, we have a big auditorium that we can use. Um, at that site uh, where the dances are that um, we generally have exclusive use of. Um, so they'll do the game shows in there so they can really sort of literally have the students come on down if, if they're doing a game show or something along those lines. It's a great space for their talent shows as well. Um, at uh, Ursinus, um, I confess I've not been to that particular location. It's in Collegeville, um, which is uh, Northwest, I believe of downtown Philadelphia. It's a suburban area location, um, wonderful campus, wonderful hosts. They've been very, very good to us. Um, and I think that they would have the same types of activities that they would at Dickinson, again, staying on campus really for, for most of the time. Um, I should also mention that our sinus is for grades five through roughly 10, the, the age limit, it's really more of a thing at, at a site like our sinus where it's, they can't turn 17 before, um, the end of before September 1st of a given year. Roger Williams is also grades uh, five to 10, the same, the same age grade. Skidmore and Dickinson are grades seven to 10. So there are not the, the younger groups of students, there are no courses offered at those sites for them. Johns Hopkins in Baltimore, um, that's for grades seven to 12. So we do have classes specifically for ninth to 12th graders for the students, especially the students who are coming to the program for the first time who maybe aren't as used to or not. It's been a while since they've been in a class with a 13 year old. So these would be classes um, where the students would all be a little bit older. Um, there are not many of those classes, but there are a handful that are available. 
Um, at that site also, it's it's in downtown Baltimore. It is a safe campus. There are turnstiles and security guards in front of every building. I know Baltimore has a bit of a reputation. I have lived in Baltimore for 27 years. I live right by the campus. I have never had a problem. Um, it's a safe it's a safe campus. There is an opportunity um, occasionally for students again to walk about a block distance, maybe maybe a block and a half into the Charles Village neighborhood. There are some shops there. There are um, some convenience stores and where they can get they can get you know snacks and food and things like that. Um, they would absolutely be escorted to those areas. Um, it would be organized with staff there, um, supervising smaller groups of students. Again, there would be other options as well on campus for the students. Um, but that's generally how our, our um, East Coast sites, the, the general flavor of them, the experience is pretty much the same, um, but there are some, some weather differences. It can it probably a little hot, more hot and humid in Baltimore and South Central Pennsylvania than it is um, in Roger Williams or in, in Bristol, Rhode Island at Roger Williams, where there's more of a, a, a coastal environment. Great. So I want to thank David for joining and sharing with us a wealth of information about the sites and the on-campus experience. Just to follow up, we um, this is a list of the tuition that varies by site, and it ranges from, as you can see, $3,099 for a three-week day program to $6,819 for a three-week residential program. There is limited financial aid is available for eligible students, but it's only for students who reside in Maryland, New Jersey, or West Virginia. So for more information on financial aid, please visit our website. And also to get more up-to-date information on tuition, please visit our website as well. Now that you know all the great things about the on-campus program, um, let's talk about testing options. As you saw, some of the courses do require testing and eligibility for students to enroll. <laughs> Listed here are all of our different testing options. Um, the school age, school and college ability test, which is the SCAT exam and the online SCAT exam are tests that were created by CTY and they're for students in grades two through 12. For more information, please visit our website. It will tell you about the test and how to enroll um, to take to register, not enroll, to register to take the exam. The exam provides students with a score on both the verbal assessment and quantitative. Verbal will allow students to Enroll in courses that are English language arts courses, your arts and humanities courses, your social science, not social science, your um, history courses, um, and <clears throat> I believe world language. And then our quantitative will allow students to enroll in courses that are math, um, computer science, and our regular science courses. We also um, take the PSAT 8-9 and SAT, which are part of the college board suite of exams. Um, and also listed on, on that is the PSAT um, 10 as well. The PSAT 8-9 is for students who are in grades five and six only. The SAT um, is for students who are in grades seven through 12. So please visit our website to find out more information as well as the eligibility scores for the PSAT and SAT. Um, to register for these exams, you need to visit College Board because they are the ones who administer those exams and they have predetermined uh, um, dates that they administer the test as well as locations. ACT, which is very similar to the SAT, um, is also a test that we you can submit for eligibility. Again, you would need to visit that website so that you can find out how to register for the ACT. Um, they also have predetermined dates and locations for when they administer their exam. The spatial test battery is an assessment that's also been created by CTY. It really just looks at students in terms of spatial awareness. And so it's really focused only on the quantitative side. So taking this test is eligible for students who are in grades five through 12, but it would only give them a score in quantitative, which will allow them to take, again, math classes, science classes, and computer science classes. And then also we have the option for students um, in schools to submit existing test scores. And CTY recognizes that many schools administer uh, national and state standardized tests to their students. And so we have a list of 47 tests that we will accept. If your school has already administered the exam, you will simply need to submit a copy of the test scores or the score report 
that shows that your student scored in the 98th percentile or higher. For more information, please visit our website for testing and eligibility. Um, we also have a webinar um, on our YouTube page that goes a little bit more in depth about testing and eligibility, and you um, encourage you to watch that as well. And now that you know all about CTY, let's look at the next steps for joining the CTY family. For becoming a CTY, um, you would actually uh, create an account and you join by going to our website, cty.ghu.edu backslash get started. And that would take you to our um, membership application um, page where you would submit a membership application. The fee is $50. However, if the student does meet the requirements for free and reduced lunch, then the cost of uh, the application fee is $10. Once you have submitted an application, then you can now either test and register to test or submit um, test scores. And once those test scores are uploaded and eligibility is determined, then you now move to the ability to uh, enroll in any of our hundreds of engaging courses through our online programs or through our on-campus programs. And then hooray, you are a CTY. As part of being a CTY family, then we have resources also for all of the families. Um, we have a Bright Now blog that provides up-to-date latest research and best practice on, I'm sorry, best practices in working with advanced learners. We also have our CTY reading list, which provides families with a list of books per grade levels that we recommend students read. And our parent group is a place of a wealth of resources and information as parents share, share things that are going on in their community, um, share resources that they have become aware of that works well for their students, and even get feedback about different courses or classes or their experiences at CTY. And then we have our online events as well as our webinars, which are recorded. That's either on our Facebook or YouTube page. Um, these recordings um, show uh, more information on different topics, whether it is our on-campus programs, testing our online program of financial aid, but it also shares um, uh, testimonies from different alumni and teachers in regards to their experiences at CTY. So it's a great place to, to hear from others about their experience um, at CTY. And then lastly, I just wanna thank you all for taking the time to join me today. Um, here's where you can find us online. Uh, at cty.jhu.edu. And I just encourage you to explore our website, um, to look at the different programs we offer. Um, definitely look at our on-campus programs as the application is already launched. And then there's a site there that if you do need more information or if you would like to speak to someone um, personally um, to get any questions answered, that you can actually submit a request to speak to one of our enrollment advisors. And so again, I thank you all for joining me and have a great day.